everyone. Thanks for joining this session. Um, I am Thomas. I work at Frame.io as a lead integration engineer. So my main job is to connect our cloud platform with creative apps like Final Cut Pro 10. And I have been a visual effects artist for 10 years before that. And um, when I'm not doing any bridge building between these different applications and services, I'm baking a sour bread, a sourdough bread. So let's talk about Frame.io. And who in this room knows about Frame.io? Who is using it? Wow, that's nice. Good. For all of you who have not heard about Frame.io or would like to know more about them, Frame.io is a video review and collaboration platform that has been created by our two co-founders, John and Emery. And initially, it was an internal tool for them. Emery owned a post-production company for 15 years and faced very much most of the same issues and problems as most of you guys. And um, the typical workflow was like, um, you, have this, you have this video in work in progress, and you need to get some feedback for it. So you send it up to some uh, video or file sharing services, create a private link, and uh, create a password for it. And you send it to a bunch of people, put in an email, and they have uh, the email, and they have um, dealing for it. So let's imagine we have uh, 20 different versions for it, and um, you know the email inbox gets stuffed up. And the worst thing about this is getting the feedback. Because feedback mostly was like, hey, there is this strange odd thing in the top right corner, and uh, can you fix this at minute one and 20 seconds? So you try to make sense out of this, and it takes time to really get back to this, uh, the one who gave this feedback. and a um, process does that takes time and wastes time. So this is what we try to improve and give people better tools for better expressing their feedback. And it even got so far that some of the people haven't done that much of a feedback because honestly, providing feedback to a video uh, using emails, is, you know. Uh, so this is one of the problems that we uh, saw and tried to solve. The next one is, so you have this big project, and you get a lot of media files from across uh, different people, and uh, like uh, different soundtracks, different images, or videos that you have to implement into the timeline. And let's imagine we get even more different versions from them. It's all up to you to uh, manage all these different versions on uh, these different uh, passwords and links from these people. So everything is just living in your inbox or even on your local hard drive. And um, there's no dedicated space. And let's imagine that um, you are getting sick and someone else needs to jump in and finish your work. So where, is all, uh, all, where are all the assets living that you need in order to finish uh, this sequence now? Frameware is kind of a central location for all your assets during pre-production or even post-production. So pre-production, uh, you have these previous files. You have um, location scouts creating uh, photos. So this is a central location where you can store and organize all your different files for this project. And well, when it comes to final delivery, we got to be honest that using these typical file sharing services and using private links and uh, passwords is not the best user experience. And even worse, the upload speed is very, is not so fast. So this is what we tried to solve with the Frame.io, and let me give you a demo of how it works. So here, this is Frame.io on the web. And on the left side, you have all your projects. And in the middle, you have the contents of that project. In this case, these are a bunch of videos. And to the top right corner, you have all the people that participate in that project. And everything is secure and private by default, so there is no public component about this. So no one from outside actually can see it. So no external people. So if you share that link over here, uh, no, can, no one from outside can do anything without, it, without being invited to this project. So let me create a new project here. Let me show you how this uh, works. So I call this surfing. And the first thing that I would like to do is invite John. So 
Now that I have invited John, he is getting notifications as soon as I am uploading some files or creating any comments or... So let's do this. Let's upload some files. And what I have here is a mix of different files, which is images and videos, but you can upload whatever you would like to upload. So you can uh, upload zip files, text files, PDF files. You can re really use Frame.io as a um, file sharing platform. So all the people that you invite to this project have access to these files. And we upload um, five times faster as Dropbox and as fast or even faster as Aspera, which are dedicated uploading services without even requiring you to install any additional software. It works right away in the browser. And even more, we do not have to transcode our video files. We do it for you. So if you have something like a ProRes file, just upload it and we generate proxy video files from this. So we can uh, watch these files, watch the video across different browsers. So it's available. But we keep the original file that you uploaded untouched, completely untouched on our servers and provide an option to download the original file. So in this case, it's not ProRes, it's H.264, but the option is there to download the original file and also to download the proxy files, just in case you need it. Um, good, so we have Hoverscrub to give you an idea what the video is all about. And if you click space, uh, no, no sound is weak. Um, we can use the keys in order to have a quick look and jump from file to file. All right, good. So that's basically it. This is how it's uh, getting started. Well, John has been notified, new files are on, are up, and now it's up to him to leave some comments. Uh, let me jump over to a different project here. And one thing that we manage is version control. So during the creation process, endless numbers of versions are created. And um, rather than having 25 different versions and 25 different thumbnails of the same edit, we created something that we call a version stack. So let me create one. We have two different versions of the same edit. And now the versions, version stack has been created. And this version stack can now be shared so you have just one link and one password. Although the password is optional, it's up to you. So if you have 50 different versions and you have just one version stack, the link stays the same and um, the link is, displayed, uh, is displaying uh, the latest version that you put on top of the stack, which makes it more convenient than having 50 different links and passwords. Um, in the client's inbox. Good, so let me play this back. I'm using JKL. Play it back, and as soon as uh, something catches my eye, I start typing, like, truck is moving backwards. Okay, so which truck? Um, in order to further communicate my idea, or to be very specific, which truck I am seeing here, I have these annotation tools. So if you click the paintbrush tool, you have different colors and shapes, like this. There is the truck. So just in case someone is not seeing it properly, uh, yes, that's uh, where the truck is. Okay, a bit overdone, so let's undo this. And, oh no, let's keep one. So let's redo this. So this is my first comment, and Playback is resuming. I said this is a nice shot. So we left two comments here, and these comments are frame based. So if I click on a comment, it is taking me right to that frame where I left the comment, including the annotations. And all the versions that we just had before and um, from which we created the version stack are now living under this drop, bar, uh, drop down here. You get a list of these uh, different versions and we can take it a step further and just compare the two different versions. Now it is up to you which version you pick. In this case, I only have two, but let's say you have 50. Uh, you can pick whatever version you would like to compare with each other. Uh, 
If I play it back, it's playing back in sync. You can compare it side by side and even compare the different audio tracks to get a better idea what uh, audio track is um, working best for you for this video. Good. So let's say this video is looking good. I want to approve it and send my colleagues a message and tell them that this is a good job. Looking great. Awesome. So as I s now I'm sending it, and everyone that I just um, selected is getting a, an email notification. Hey, Thomas approved it. Video is good. And now it's time to move on. So in order to do this, just click the uh, drop down here. It is showing you all the different other files in your project. And you can uh, jump over to the next uh, video and continue your uh, video and approval uh, process. So, but I'm jumping back to this project and see that this video here has been labeled as approved, which is good. Done. And this was pretty much something that I consider as internal messaging, internal communication. So just the people that I have invited to this project are getting notified about the uploads and comments. But what about if we would like to have some external feedback from external people or would like to deliver some files? Uh, we have two different options there for this. Under the share button here, we have share as a presentation page which gives you a lightweight page that you can um, brand with a custom color. And it is generating a, a link for you that I have just copied. So of course, we have password protection. And it's up to you if you would like to allow uh, the, maybe the client or whoever received the link to download the file. And if you're downloading it, you're not downloading the H.264 proxy file. You're actually downloading the ProRes file if you uploaded this as a source file. And what I am really excited about uh, is the expiry date. So if you're just like me, I tend to forget about all these different links that I send across the world to different people. And this might be a security issue at some point. So this is why I'm setting this link to be valid just for a week. OK, looking better. All right, so this is done. Let's see how this is looking like. And here we go. So here we have the video. It's just video focused. So there is no review component about this. And you cannot leave any comments. And the only option that you have is download or watch it and enjoy. Good. So let's jump back and check the other option that we have. It is review page that we have here. So in case we need some comments from the recipient, let's take some files here select them and generate a review URL. And we have different options here, just like before with the link expiring. Yes, I definitely want to expire this link. And this is done, looking good. Um, but just in case I have missed one file, to add one file, we have all the review links that are living here on the links tab. And you can set up you could set up and change the settings or even add uh, different other uh, videos to it. So let me go ahead and jump back, copy. Now it's copied to my clipboard. I could even just send it right away from this panel to specific email addresses, but not in this case. So private window. And let me paste this link so you can see what the recipient is seeing now. So the first thing that he is seeing is a one minute video, which is a walkthrough. How does it work with the annotation drawings and how does it work with the commenting? And yes, I am ready. And let's play it back. Ooh, looking beautiful. Nice shot. And if I hit enter and would like to submit the comment, all that we are asking for is an email address and the name. And this is just for following up. So if someone added a reply or added a new comment, this person gets notified. So this is basically it, how it works in the web client. So we have additional integrations for other creative tools like After Effects, Premiere, and Avid. But one of the uh, first integrations was with Final Cut Pro 10. So this is what I would like to demo you in right now. I just have five minutes. So what I have here is a, let's say it's a rough cut. 
and I would like to upload just five clips from it. So how would you do this? In the past, you would go here, select a clip and X, and um, do the sharing from here, from this menu, and then go to the next clip, X, and sharing. So this is tedious, it takes time. So let's just mark these guys like this and this, we would like to export four clips. And I think, yeah, maybe these need additional retouching. Yeah, so this <coughs> model should look more retouched than she already is. Good. And uh, we have two different options here, which is H264 and frame over source. These are our preset shared destinations. Source means whatever your project is set up. So if it's a ProRes project, this is what you're going to export. So I'm sticking with H264 right now because it's faster. And um, so sure, the options that I have is um, just let Final Cut render the whole timeline and upload the rendered clip up to Frame.io or just those clips that I marked with a regular marker and not a to-do. And let's upload this to, yeah, why not? Let's upload this to Apple. I think they will be excited about this. And Final Cut is now starting to render, render the whole timeline to a single file. Once it is done, it is handing off all the, this big file to our companion app, which is generating these four different clips. And if I click the magnifier icon, it is taking me right to that clip in the browser. So here we go. We just uploaded four clips with just a couple of clicks, which would require 10 or even more minutes for doing it uh, manually. So let's say I have uploaded a different timeline before, so I got some feedback for it. So this is the timeline that I uploaded. And it seems like Emery and Thomas left some comments, which is good. I need to print them out. I click print the comments, which gives me a new page that allows me to print it out or save it as PDF. And we have even more options uh, for different file formats, C CSV, XML, plain text. But we are interested in downloading all the comments for Final Cut Pro 10. This will download in Frame.io XML file. Double click it, and you are going to be prompted to select a library. I choose this library. This will generate a, an event that contains a compound clip. I drag this compound clip over here. And you see that these markers are now indicating there is a comment. And as you can see, we have all the annotation drawings and uh, also the comments right here. So the time code is in order to help you to line it up perfectly with your timelines time code. But let's say I am doing some edit here. Oh, wow, now it's out of sync. So the way to solve this is just to break apart this clip like this. We do not need a time code generator right now. And now we have all the comments sticking to your primary storyline clips. And they are moving with it, which is really nice. And even nicer is that you can trade it as to-do list right now. Good. I got to mention that we have and the iOS app, which is really safe, iOS. and um, has, has most I'd of like the features with. that the web client no, has, including um, download for offline mode. So if you're traveling you and you need offline. these files available on the train, mode, and um, no yeah, you can have the uh, offline mode, which is pretty convenient. One last thing to mention here is if you have not tried Frame.io yet and would like to, we have a special promotion running right now, especially for IBC. So you can get a 30-day free trial and um, check the pro version of Frame.io and yeah, figure out if it works for you. If someone needs a recipe for sourdough bread, <laughs> just ask me. But otherwise, check out Frame.io. And thank you very much.